Gaming chair videos always make me anxious to view in the comments section. That's because there are a highly subjective topic to discuss since everyone has their own taste when it comes to comfort, aesthetics, price, and reliability. Some people prefer those $30 office chairs from Ikea, while others feel more comfortable with a high-end Herman Miller chair or Steelcase office chair. Every human body is made differently, and because of that, finding a one-design-fits-all chair is impossible. I was perfectly happy with my previous office chair and a sudden shift towards a gaming chair made me realize that there was a lot more flexibility to this and I got used to it almost instantaneously. To be honest with you, I have never reviewed a gaming chair before, but my good old friend Dimitri has been through a lot of them. He concluded that the industry was constantly doing something wrong with the lateral support of the backrest uh, and I think Vertigear might have addressed that issue and much more. But before we talk about that, quick message from our sponsor. The new NZXD S340 Elite. What makes it so elite? We've got a gorgeous tempered glass panel, extra VR ports, improved cable management, and an awesome magnetic puck. The name is fitting, elite features at a good price. S340 Elite, check it out in the description below. What you're looking at here is a new gaming chair from Vertigear's P-Line series called the PL6000. Priced a little under $450, this is targeted towards a certain type of audience who prefer more space for movement and also better ergonomics. I'll admit, there are a variety of gaming chairs available in the market today with varying price points, but how does the PL6000 stack up? We'll find out. Vertigear is pushing the boundaries when it comes to the assembly process. Normally, assembling a chair requires an extra set of hands, but I found it to be very simple this time around. First, you have to insert the wheels into the aluminum star-shaped base, then you attach the metal base frame underneath the seat with the included pre-mounted screws. Note that there's a certain direction to mount this, so look for that particular portion in the instruction manual. At this point, you also have to make sure not to adjust the lever uh, as this would complicate the process. The backrest assembly was just as simple as sliding it into the brackets on the seat and installing the two custom M8 screws on each side. There are no plastic covers to hide the bracket on the backrest uh, because everything is integrated inside this part. It adds an extra bit of character to the aesthetics and I quite like it. Quick mention on my sample, I had to wiggle the backrest a little bit for the custom screws to pass through, uh, but that issue has been corrected on recent shipments. I happen to have the red and black variant of this chair, but you can choose four other options that consist of black, blue, green, and white accents. The color scheme continues its trend through the included lumbar cushion and the neck pillow. You will definitely get a sense that this is a gaming chair, and that may or may not be appealing to some buyers. The casters also feature color matching rings, which is a nice touch, and they're built pretty well. My office is covered in carpets, the friction is a lot higher than using this chair on a wooden floor. Vortigear is working on an auto brake version of these casters, so I'm looking forward to that in the future. The material choice here is PVC leather, which is easier to clean and maintain due to its stain resistant and water resistant characteristics. The downside to this type of material is the heat concentration levels, something I experienced with the SL5002. Now, what Vortigear has done to combat this issue is implement tiny open cell spots on the seat and the backrest to give a little bit of breathing room for your body. Over my usage, I noticed a slight amount of heat buildup and that should be obvious given the almost dangerous amount of time I spent at my desk writing scripts and editing videos. If you live in a country like Canada, it might be an advantage during the cold winter days. Seat adjusting capabilities are also a very crucial aspect of a gaming chair and the PL6000 delivers everything I've ever wanted. There's a good range of height adjustment, the backrest can be adjusted from 80 degrees all the way up to 140 degrees, and I've started to lean all the way back occasionally to take short breaks, and sometimes it's the perfect setting to zone out listening to my favorite tunes. The armrest provides four directional settings, so in this case you can push the armrest forward and backwards, as well as pull it towards you. There's plenty of room for height adjustment, and finally you have the option to angle the rests. Um, I was able to find the right position within a short amount of time, but if you prefer to illuminate the armrests, all you have to do is remove the screws holding these parts underneath the seat with the included Allen key. The tilt lock mechanism can be used in five different positions to better suit your comfort level. Uh, it's a welcoming change over the traditional adjusting knob, plus uh, I use this every single day to lock my position for a straight posture during editing sessions. And now onto the critical part of reviewing a gaming chair, comfort. I have to admit, I enjoyed my time sitting on this chair. There's plenty of room for maneuverability and that's exactly what the PL6000 was designed for. I'm six foot tall and I have broad shoulders and the backrest seemed perfect for my size. The sides are not too edgy or high, so the tension is very minimal and that's a thumbs up. 
The main portion of the backrest is mostly flat, which might be a problem for some, especially if you want to achieve a straight posture. Normally, a human being's back consists of a gentle curve, and I found myself slouching forward due to this flat design on the backrest, and I don't think it would serve the purpose of an office chair. Now, this is where the lumbar cushion comes into play, but honestly, there lies a problem. First of all, there is no way to permanently fix this on the chair, and second, the padding was a little too thick for me, and I tried to find the perfect sweet spot for it, and unfortunately, no luck. On the other hand, if you prefer to lean all the way back, uh, in other words, up for the maximum tilting position, it's a comforting experience sitting on the PL6000. Adjust the lever a little backward and casually just take short breaks or zone out listening to music. The seat was comfortable too. The padding is a little too far on the stiffer side, which might not be your cup of tea, but I found it to be very relaxing. The sides are slightly angled higher, but that doesn't disrupt thigh movement, and there's plenty of room for that. If you're that guy who likes to place one leg under the other, this chair is definitely worth taking a look. Remember, opinions can vary depending on your taste, but all I can tell you is this. If you're a user designing for more space and comfort, especially for your backrest, Vertigear might have delivered one of the best in that category with the PL6000. Albeit, the flat design on the backrest could be a problem uh, if you're trying to achieve a straight posture for office and such, but if you prefer a more relaxed position like leaning all the way backward while gaming, it's a comforting experience on the PL6000. The assembly process was simpler than the SL5000, and the seating is comfortable plus the chair is built really well. The material choice is something I'm anxious about, especially when summer hits here in Canada, and considering the price, I would recommend this to anyone looking for a proper gaming chair. Like all peripherals, I do however recommend you try it out before you buy it. So what are your thoughts on the new PL6000 gaming chair uh, from Vertigear? Um, would you consider upgrading your existing normal chairs or even your um, gaming chair? Um, and for those of you who own an actual gaming chair, I'd love to start an open discussion with you guys regarding your experience and concerns. Uh, plus, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm Eber with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.